I don't expect uh, that we will have a vaccine earlier than in the coming, in the, in the next spring. And we don't know how we will be able to manage a second crisis in the fall, partly because we don't know, well, first, if it will come, which I think uh, it's very likely that it will, and second, uh, how uh, strong it will hit. And now we know that the uh, uncertainty scenario uh, are something that in terms of uh, investment uh, have a strong deterrent. So I expect, uh, and in spite of this optimism of the stock market these days, I expect that the situation will continue to be volatile in the, in the next uh, uh, few months. Another aspect I'm worried about is how uh, is the institutional response. Uh, you know, on the one hand, we want to have, uh, uh, you know, we want to intervene to help people who have been, uh, you know, victim of the situation without being any fault on their side, have lost their job. Uh, some people have to shut their, down their business. Uh, but at the same time, we have to do it in a careful and intelligent way. In Europe, uh, some countries, uh, we know uh, unemployment uh, tends to grow very fast and to recover very slow. Uh, I'm thinking especially of uh, Italy and Spain that are now claiming a lot of resources from the budget of the European Union. Now, this money in principle could be uh, usefully spent, but it can also be poorly spent if the political process doesn't uh, do a good job. I'm worried about uh, uh, too much focus being on the demand side and too little focus on the supply side. I mean, for, for uh, another uh, non-trivial period, we will, uh, uh, the type of goods and services we will need will be different from the normal types. And uh, somehow that creates job opportunities, and, but it, there is also sectors where job opportunities will be diminished. And it would be very important to create the necessary flexibility and help people to stay in the labor market, not subsidize people for, to be out of the labor market. That's, that's my concern, especially for Europe. I was in, uh, in Switzerland during, uh, for, for some weeks here, and even here, where I would say the response for international standards was among the best, it was uh, hard to get uh, uh, home delivery for food, for instance. It was not impossible, but it, there were very long lines. And one wonders why, because that, that has never been a dangerous thing to do. So I think that it's more a matter of uh, you know, culture and also forms of organization. We teachers, for instance, had to adapt to new ways of doing uh, our work. I understand that it's not possible for all activities, but in many activities, I think that there was a, an excessive reduction of the, uh, uh, of the economic activity when, uh, uh, and we have to avoid it, it happens again, or, or worse, it happens to a larger scale. And so I think that governments uh, should focus on this type of policy uh, that keep people, even creating forms of temporary jobs, because we know that uh, this is not going to last forever, so the question is, oh, do we really have to spend so much money? Well, if the alternative is to spend money to put people uh, not out of the labor market, that money is still, is still well spent. So one thing we have learned is that politicians uh, uh, respond to very short time events. And, you know, in, in many countries they have proven completely unable even to uh, anticipate uh, by few, few weeks something that was clearly coming. I think, I'm thinking of the United Kingdom, for instance. Because, you know, Italy can take as an excuse that things came a bit as a surprise as, as, as a beginning. But already in Spain, that argument is not so clear. And it's uh, clear that it's not there for countries like the United Kingdom. So we have to take into account that politicians will be uh, driven uh, to some extent by whims. And we have to create the institutional framework for that to happen uh, as little as possible. There is discussion now at the level of European Union precisely, I think, on that. So it cannot be that some countries go completely unprepared to the situation and then uh, expose, they claim a lot of resources. That's, that's the first thing. And in terms of you know, being a bit more concrete, I think that uh, countries started uh, with, uh, by, by, by making strong statements about, you know, they will not, the virus will not uh, change our way of living. But the virus is not a, a person, the virus is a virus. So it acts in a mechanical way and we can be as proud as we are of our way of living, it doesn't change anything. Uh, what I think uh, should be done more is the strategy of testing and tracking as opposed to 
uh, very harsh lockdown. So uh, we, we face, we probably have to uh, act also on the lockdown side, but actually I am involved in a, in a project with some researchers at uh, universities in Hong Kong, and uh, we have uh, estimated that uh, uh, any early intervention in tracking, like it has, done, it has been done in Korea, for instance, but also to some extent in Switzerland, uh, avoids that the situation gets to the point where the testing capacity is insufficient. Well, to, to begin with, the testing capacity can be chosen, so one needs to have much more testing capacity than, than uh, we had at the beginning. And at that point, when numbers are small, the, the, the diffusion of the virus can be contained much more than in, it has been done in, in this occasion. And that accompanied with measures of uh, partial lockdown as opposed to uh, drastic lockdown as it's been the case in Italy or, or in Spain at some point, uh, I think they prove successful. The, the, the case of uh, how Switzerland and Germany on the one hand have handled the situation, uh, arguably they have had a couple of weeks to, to work on that, but still, it has proven more successful than what has been done uh, in other countries that are, you know, where the health system was very unprepared and then the draconian measure were uh, hitting the economy in a particularly strong way. So I think that that is the first thing I would say. We have to be prepared to the second wave. We are not sure it will come, but we are all, we, 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 you know, the probability that it will come is very high, so we have probably to take that almost as a, as a fact. And we have to prepare the hospital system and also the necessary measure on tracking. I think we have also to accept the fact that, uh, uh, I think that the concern for uh, privacy sometimes has gone beyond the point of which, uh, you know, one should take those th 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 things into account. We live in free democratic society. We don't want to give up that, but, uh, you know, temporary measures that uh, allow uh, uh, tracking have social benefits that are so large that I think we should not uh, exaggerate that discussion. The best outcome is that uh, in, uh, in one year we look back and we say, okay, uh, we, it, looked, it was really bad, but now everything is, uh, is as it was before. And, you know, fortunately we cannot rule out this, uh, this scenario. Uh, I'm saying there are many concerns uh, between this now and that point. But, uh, you know, if the political process gets a bit more straight, uh, more cooperative, uh, I think that uh, this is not something impossible. Actually, if you ask me, do you believe that in five years from now we will still be fighting with the leftover of this? I would say no. I think also earlier than that we'll probably be out. But, uh, you know, the world has so many other problems uh, in, and those are not going to be resolved when COVID goes away. So we can at best hope that the effects of COVID are gone.